Welcome to the Pharmacy Leaders Podcast with your host, Tony Guerra. The Pharmacy Leaders Podcast is a member of the Pharmacy Podcast Network with interviews and advice on building your professional network, brand, and a purposeful second income from students, residents, and innovative professionals. Hi, everyone, and thanks for joining us today. Uh, my name is Christine Mason. I'm a PGY2, or a second-year community pharmacy leadership and administration resident with The Ohio State University College of Pharmacy. And I'm here today with my colleague and friend, Shannon Krause. So this is part two of our four-part series where we're discussing administrative residency programs, our personal career paths, as well as some information about some research that we're working on related to burnout and workforce issues. So today we're in part two, where we'll be sharing a little bit about our individual backgrounds and career paths. And then if you were able to join us back in part one, we talked about some overview information about administrative residency programs in general. So as we reflect on kind of our backgrounds and our career paths of how we got here today, you know, what do you think of, Shannon, when you think back to being a pharmacy student and, and how you got where you are? Yes, thanks, Christine, for asking. Hello, everyone. My name is Shannon Krause, and again, I am the second year health system pharmacy administration resident at Ohio Health Riverside Methodist Hospital. And what a great opportunity with three months left of residency to reflect on pharmacy school, residency journey, and next steps beyond. So thinking back to pharmacy school itself, I went to Ohio Northern University and initially went to pharmacy school in hopes to become a Costco pharmacist because I truly do love Costco and shopping there. And while my career path did not lead me to Costco, at least right now, instead rather to residency, and that was actually through taking advantage of all the great pharmacy organizations at Ohio Northern, as well as wonderful mentors, and then eventually an internship at the Johns Hopkins Hospital that opened my mind and experience to what health system pharmacy leaders could do. So thinking of the policies, the safety and regulations compliance efforts, from a formulary management perspective, thinking about the financial and clinical outcomes that result from pharmacy leadership, truly amazing things. So whenever I came back to Ohio and had the opportunity to complete some site visits within the Columbus region, looking at the health system pharmacy administration programs, I had no doubt that is exactly what aligned with my strengths and interests and what I would hope to do in the future. So fortunate to have matched at Ohio Health Riverside Methodist for residency. And through various experiences, whether working on formulary monographs, leading different initiatives to identify cost savings while improving quality, various projects throughout the course of my residency journey continue to strengthen my passion and interest for formulary management. And so very fortunate that I was able to also correlate this with the strong coursework at The Ohio State University. So another reason why I was so passionate about the Columbus area HSPA, or Health System Pharmacy Administration Programs, was the rich history of the OSU program. And so thinking back, the Ohio State University program started in 1959 by Clifton Lachelet, who was the director of pharmacy from 1958 to 83. He is well known for his innovations in pharmacy practice, including IV admixtures, as well as implement, implementing the nuclear pharmacy and drug information services at The Ohio State University. Since 1959, over 200 graduates have successfully completed the OSU program, many of whom are directors of pharmacy across the country, innovators within our profession, and thought leaders. So very fortunate to be able to follow the success of these great graduates. And as mentioned, my interests stay pretty consistent throughout the course of residency in terms of formulary management, blending that quality and financial components together to prom promote optimal patient care and excited to have accepted a position at Wake Forest Baptist Health as the medication strategy specialist in about three months from now. So, so fortunate to have been able to reflect. Christine, how about for you? What things have been really foundational in leading to you to where you are today? Yeah, so I think back to pharmacy school and, you know, during pharmacy school, I interned in community-based practice. So I really loved the, the opportunities that I had as an intern, as well as seeing what my pharmacists were doing of providing direct patient care and, you know, really being that frontline healthcare provider in the community to be accessible to patients and to build those relationships and really be a part of their life. So as I was going through pharmacy school, I really thought that I was going to graduate and, and go into community practice as a staff pharmacist because I loved those interactions and I loved the care that they were able to provide in that setting. 
But as I went through my appy year, I had the opportunity to have some administrative um, appy rotations. And through that, I got to see, you know, a whole nother side of pharmacy that I didn't get a lot of exposure to as a student. So what does it mean to be in a pharmacy administration or in an administrative role? And and what impact can you really have on practice? And so I got to see, you know, a lot of things, you know, from from medication management, um, programs, program development, program implementation. So, you know, a wide variety of different things I was exposed to as a student that really let me see that my strengths were in project management and the impact that I could have by using those strengths in an administrative residency program and, and down the road in an administrative position. So I had not been thinking residency through pharmacy school. And about a week before ASHP mid-year of my P4 year, I booked a flight and flew out to Las Vegas and met with programs all over the country to really see what, what their programs had in store and, and the experiences that they had and where their graduates were going. So one of the things that drew me to the Ohio State program was not just that I was, you know, a student and proud alumni of of the Ohio State University, a proud Buckeye, but also really this hub and spoke model. So in addition to the history that the program has, it has this unique um, setup where, you know, we have the core hub of the program, which is is truly our, our didactic work and the work that we do here at the college through our master's curriculum. But in addition to that, there's all of these spokes off of that. So we're able to take what we learn in the classroom and apply it at our practice site. And one of the things that's so great is the diversity of the practice sites that are part of our cohort. So then all of those different spokes, you know, we have, you know, community health systems, we have academic medical centers, we have community-based practice sites. And so people bring all of that perspective back to the hub, back to the cohort to have some really enriching learning that happens there from all of these different perspectives. So learning from not only residents at those different sites, but really from leaders at all of those different sites and all of those different settings. So as somebody in community practice, that was something that was really meaningful to me to see how we interplay with the health system as a whole, um, as the community-based practice side. So that was something that I looked at was kind of the diversity of the cohort. And, you know, not just that there was a community resident, but what were the interactions with those other folks? So that's something I really valued in addition to the history of the program. So then I started my residency. I was lucky to match here with the Ohio State University College of Pharmacy community programs, um, specifically in the in the administration and leadership or the HSPA program. And through that, I've had the opportunity to learn a lot about what my interests are and how I can really give back to to the pharmacy and to the healthcare team. So I've had the opportunity to be involved in a lot of medication safety or patient safety initiatives, as well as some quality training. So really looking at not only that we can provide care, but is that care of a high quality that patients are really getting the best care that they can in a community-based setting. So I, I look forward to continuing my work and helping people really provide great care through, you know, patient safety and quality and compliance and and really making sure that people are confident and competent clinicians in community-based practice. So when you reflect back, you know, back on your journey, Shannon, um, what is some advice that you would give to to folks that are considering residency based on what you've learned through this process? Yeah, great question, Christine. And so for current students or those who have not yet completed appy rotations or hopefully maybe don't have a schedule for them yet, I say if you're thinking about administration residency programs, definitely take advantage of an opportunity to do an administrative focus rotation. And if you can't get an administrative focus rotation, take advantage of maybe your hospital setting that and ask for those opportunities to get involved in maybe some hospital larger projects or community larger projects that have that administrative flair on them. So you can really see if fulfilling and aligning and strengthening that skill set aligns with your um, passions and maybe potential interests in this type of residency program. And then when assessing different residency programs, I would definitely say look at the current um, residents of the program, where they're going, and then the graduates as well. That'll help illustrate, you know, how successful you may be post-completion of your residency program and maybe what opportunities are there for you, both during, considering who you might learn from, and then the network that you'll have afterwards. Christine, what about you? What thoughts do you have for our listeners? Yeah, I would definitely agree to, you know, look at the programs that you're considering um, for those of you that are you know actively looking at residencies and see where do their graduates go and, you know, do those sound like jobs that you want to do. So that's step one for those that are, you know, looking actively at residency programs. But if you're considering, you know, is residency even right for me? I would say 
two pieces of advice would be to say yes. Um, you never know what an experience or what an opportunity is going to help you learn about yourself. So I would say take advantage of opportunities through school, through professional associations, your internship, or for those of you on rotations, you know, really utilize those projects and opportunities to learn more about yourself and what really fuels your fire and, and gets you excited to be a pharmacist. Um, the second piece of advice I would give is really just to keep an open mind. You know, I didn't think when I started pharmacy school that this is what I would be doing. And so keeping an open mind through all of those experiences really opens your eyes to things that you didn't know existed. So whether you're, you know, early on in your schooling or if you're actively looking at jobs or residencies or if you're out in practice and looking for a change, really just keeping an open mind about what's out there because you never know what an opportunity is going to do for you. So thank you guys for joining us today in part two. Hopefully we were able to share some of our kind of tips and tricks that we've learned along the way and a little bit about our individual career paths. Um, if you did not listen to part one, we gave a more general overview of administrative programs that you might want to go back and give a listen to if you're interested in an administrative residency program. And then we hope you'll join us in parts three and four, where we talk about some research on burnout and workforce issues. So in part three, we'll be focusing on health system. And then in part four, we will be focusing on uh, community-based settings. So thanks so much for joining, and we hope you're back in part three. Support for this episode comes from the audiobook Memorizing Pharmacology, a relaxed approach. With over 9,000 sales in the United States, United Kingdom, and Australia, it's the go-to resource to ease the pharmacology challenge. Available on Audible, iTunes, and Amazon.com. In print, ebook, and audiobook. Thank you for listening to the Pharmacy Leaders Podcast with your host, Tony Guerra. Be sure to share the show with the hashtag HashPharmacyLeaders. 